Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 40 and the final part of Ultron the Real Robot. He's a real robot, it's not a costume, there's no one inside. He can move, he's motorised, he's got force feedback in his joints, he can hear you, he can see you, and he's also got a virtual reality brain, which basically gives him volition and makes him do things, and we need to do some tuning on that this time, and we also need to finish off some of the cosmetics. He's looking a bit grey plastic at the moment, and we want to make him look like metal. We also need to sort out some things around the face there, his button nose, and various other things. Right, I just wanted to talk about Ultron's facial features. So obviously he's got these bright red eyes and this button nose, and that's in fact the camera, which is a pixie cam and um, it's on this giant board and it doesn't really fit anywhere else, it's not fixed in at all, it's just shoved in the hole. So I could have put it behind one of the eyes, but the problem is then it would be so far back because the size of the board it wouldn't see past his nose. So actually what we're going to do is take that out, because we did actually find another solution which was to use the virtual reality handset for him to track objects, and I've made a replacement piece that's going to go over his nose there, so... Um, that should fit quite nicely, that's going to be stuck on. The eyes I'm going to paint and then we'll decide if we need to print eyelids or anything else for them. Here it is, happy now? I want to paint all of Ultron to make him look a bit more metallic, but he's not really chromed and um, he's quite actually quite a dark colour. So uh, this is one of the unpainted bicep backs and this is one I've already had a go at. So what I've actually done is uh, painted some black acrylic on the bottom and then boshed some silver over with um, a big coarse brush. I've kind of gone against the... Uh, or across the grain of the 3D prints. It's not quite as good as it could be, but I'm hoping that will reflect some uh, kind of light and dark. It makes it a bit more shiny, because the silver acrylic is quite shiny, and gives it sort of shadows at the bottom. I could paint white under the very top, or any um, up-looking features, as it were, to uh, make that whiter still, but I think that's not too bad. I probably need to practice some more, though. Well, those have turned out really quite similar, so uh, I guess it's kind of okay. It'd probably be better if the parts are more detailed and I could work the black into some of the sort of pieces that go underneath and so on. So we're going to try a different piece. Yes, we're going to have a go at one of the chest plates. So most of these parts are removable, so they can be painted and so on. Um, obviously, it is right on the front of the thing, but um, if it goes wrong, I can always paint over it, of course, so it's not necessarily a disaster. Probably need to get a smaller brush, though, so we can get some paint right in under the details. So effectively I've kind of brushed black into all the creases and things there and now we're going to go over it with the silver. Right, I'm a bit happier with that, so uh, that's kind of more the effect I was expecting, really. It's just the flat pieces, it's really hard to do it, so um, there we go. Kind of okay with that, we'll do both and we'll stick them on and see what it looks like. Right, so those pieces of course are painted, the middle isn't and neither is anything else, so uh, pretty happy of how that looks. 
I think it gives us a real definition around the edges at least and makes it look a bit more like metallic metal. So I'm going to carry on and paint some more of it. Right, so that's all the black done. It looks a bit like he's camouflaged, but I want some quite deep highlights on the face. So I've overdone it a bit and obviously I can always paint it over with silver. So uh, now I just need to botch the silver all over and try and match that chest. Yep, I've pretty much just shoved black paint in all the creases and all the down facing surfaces. There's one shoulder bell, just working some silver into that. Anywhere it's a bit excessive, we can just uh, put some extra on and fade the black out, but mainly it's gone into all the creases and around there, so pretty happy with the look of it on the whole. There's that head, so I've uh, of course painted out a lot of the black, but I've left a few bits and pieces as highlights. You can see it just coming through from a distance, it looks pretty good. And I've just painted over the eyes completely, so there's a little bit of red showing through. Uh, we'll see if he needs eyelids, but uh, for now I'm pretty happy that the red eyes have gone. Right, that's pretty much all of it painted. I'm pretty happy with the look overall. So yes, I have painted the back as well. There's a few extra things appeared here, a bit of conduit and some stuff. There's quite a few wires inside, but they really do need to be flexible. And these big holes are really needed for the way the arms fold when the shoulders rotate. I made a cover here for the head electronics, which never had a place to live. And down on his base here, I've put the electronics that were hanging freely in a lovely box here with connectors for those audio connectors and the main connector that goes to the robot. We've got a USB boost adapter here running the electronics, so it's isolated from the power supply that runs the motors. And you can see the big speakers there, which are for Ultron's voice. Right, this is Ultron's brain, which is his hardware control and also the interface to the computer. It tracks his emotions and deals with reflex and reaction. You'll notice I've now added a small screen here, which gives us a view into the virtual world. Not sure how easy that is to see, but basically that is a view into the virtual world. So if I move the uh, virtual camera around, which is basically my Vive tracker, you can see all around. If I look over here, we should be able to look down into the ground there where the balls fall and hit the colliders to make Ultron do things. Of course, I don't need the whole HTC Vive setup to run this. It could be running on a laptop with one of the virtual camera views here, either fixed, or we could just move it around with a mouse. This is also actually a touch screen, so I considered having an interface where you can scroll around to look at different parts of the virtual world. Right, in terms of the virtual um, environment, I've now added random bounciness to each ball that gets instantiated, so that basically um, it does something different um, when they fall to the bottom, and they're all slightly different. So of course the uh, balls come out of the yellow emitter there uh, when, it's, um, when it hears something, and the blue and the brown ones when it gets touched. And the little swiveller at the bottom here is... Um, basically uh, modified depending on its um, emotions. So you can hear Ultron in the background saying some things. If we make some sounds, some more yellow balls appear and they should all have pretty random properties. So they should bounce in different ways and he should react and do different things. So we can hear him saying some different things there. And of course those can't um, can't all be speaking at the same time because the speech synth has a ready busy protocol. Right, so the practical output of that is that um, Ultron does a few things by himself. His joints are still sensitive to me touching them. And some of that uh, reaction and reflex comes from his hardware in his brain. And some of that is going on in the background in the virtual world. If you want to know more about the virtual stuff, then uh, have a look at the last episode. That speaker down there is definitely loud enough and it's not really turned up that much either. So there we go, and um, obviously he reacts to sound. You can see his head turns yellow, and he should turn his head. Sometimes he turns his head anyway, so it's a bit like he's alive, really. Um, of course, we can change his emotions, which uh, change the way the balls go. So if we um, press some buttons on his brain there, you should be able to see that thing moving. And that gives him a slight bias towards uh, doing something else completely different. We could. We could tone down uh, how, uh, how much he does things by just having those shutters opening less uh, right at the top of the virtual environment. And those are letting the balls out. So of course, um, the balls expire after 30 seconds. So we could keep those shutters shut 
and um, that would mean he's not quite so hectic and in fact we could um, of course tie that into the emotions as well or some sort of dial about how excited he is. So there we go. There is that volition ball that releases every 30 seconds now. Um, if nothing else goes on, if I give him a poke, obviously his uh, reaction stuff still happens and you can see some balls getting generated there. So he'll uh, just do a thing by himself eventually and say some things. I'm busy thinking. There we go. Of course, we've still got the force feedback in the joints. So if I pull a joint, it should move. Uh, same on that side. And he senses that and reacts to me. And um, that also causes balls to be triggered. And that does something in the background. As I say, you don't forget to check out the previous two episodes for more on the virtual reality brain stuff. I'd love to do more on that. I was planning a much bigger virtual world that you could go around and tinker with in virtual reality, but basically people just aren't watching those episodes, so I'm going to leave it there. My general thoughts on Project Ultron are that I'm really happy the way it's turned out. I think it looks pretty good in the end, uh, given that I basically designed each piece as I went uh, with no real sort of plan. I had various objectives, like putting force feedback in, and giving him some form of AI. But apart from that, I pretty much made it up as I went. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, not too unhappy with the paint job. I'd really like to get this out into a show, some sort of science fiction convention or a science fair, and kind of leave it there interacting with the public. That'd be really good. There's a few of those events coming up, so I may well drag it out of the house. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna transport it. I think it's all gonna to have to come into pieces. So for the future, I've got uh, plenty of ideas for other projects. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you get notified when there's a new video. There will be shorter projects coming up. This one's been over a year and a half. So we're planning some stuff that are one or two or three episodes, as well as my Robot X build, which is the walking robot, which is gonna have various short series of building different characters on there. So already we've dressed that as Bender from Futurama and we're now starting dressing that as Iron Spider-Man, which is a far more robotic character with lots of robotic features. So don't forget to check that series out. There's also lots of other robotic builds in my channel, including my Star Wars droids and various other things coming up. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, Ultron series. If you've been watching it, if you haven't been watching it, don't forget to review the previous 39 episodes. It's really important to say that most of these projects are funded through Patreon by my super fans, and that's ultimately how Ultron got built over all of these months. So don't forget to check out patreon.com slash xrobots, and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. All right, don't forget videos come out on a Tuesday and sometimes a Friday, and thanks for watching, and that's all for now.